Hello, and welcome to The House Files, a podcast about building a triplex in Portland, Oregon that exists primarily to talk you out of doing such a thing. This week is like decision week. It really is. It really is. So many decisions, as usual. Well, we had like, a, I think you were on the phone with your mother, who is our, our cabinet designer, for three hours last night, I think. Yep. That um, was um, not expected. Didn't expect a three hour call starting at 7 p.m., but... You know. Um, and essentially, we have been putting off several decisions related to the cabinets. Like we, a lot of things we've gotten about 80% on the decisions where we'll get to like a vibe status and then we'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll deal with the last bit of that later. And um, turns out- This is later. This is later. This is, later is now. And- Well, the other reason that this is now like an immediate deadline is because the company that we are going to have make our cabinets is actually going out of business this year. Which so they're is... closing up shop, which is a little bit, uh, makes me a little bit nervous, but um, they still get, did give us the best price, the best quote out of anybody else we talked to. Yeah, and competitive with like Ikea yeah. too, um, without the frustrations of building an Ikea kitchen. So the deadline is they're going to continue to work the rest of this year on any orders that are placed through two weeks from now. Right. So we have basically two weeks to get the order actually placed so that we're on their schedule for the rest of their their construction pr- it, plan. So the first thing, which was, I believe, a recommendation from your mother, which was, you know, the, the cabinets, we're doing kind of a standard set of cabinets in the rental units from this company. And originally we were going to have this kind of MDF composite material, very easy to clean, um, a a little cheaper, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think it was on the cheaper end, but it was still, it was very durable. That was our main, it it looked good. It looked better than Ikea cabinets generally and uh, very easy to clean. We are now going to switch those to wood and that's because... Wood you can fix if you can't get the original supplier. And it's easier to match it compared to matching the particular style we were going for, which was like their style. Right. So the wood style that we're going to use is a very typical style that pretty much any cabinet maker can do. And the likelihood of actually needing to replace the doors is pretty low anyway, because it being wood, it's easier to refinish and re resurface and stuff and and like if we don't if we want to update it we can stain it in a way that like is you can't if you don't like your composite cabinets you either have to get all new cabinets and yeah yeah. so um not that i'm worried about us changing our feelings about it but i'm worried about damage to them Mm. and needing to replace a door or something like that but not like that's very low on my list of general worries about this house it's just one of many things i could come up with to worry about yep so now we have to actually get the order in, which means picking uh, wood stain color, picking cut paint color for our cabinets for the entire place. So so we went to the Benjamin Moore store. Um, and the reason we went to Benjamin Moore, essentially the cabinet manufacturer will work with any of the major paint manufacturers, Sherman Williams, Miller, mm. uh, Benjamin Moore. Those are kind of the typical ones in North America. And um, Benjamin Moore, I think, is known for being kind of maybe one of the pricier ones, but I'm not entirely sure. I think they all have high end ranges and lower end ranges. Um, But Benjamin Moore is where we started. And that's because our Cambria counter, which we now have a full size sample of. Yeah. We should bring it out. Oh, yeah. Show them the the size of this. Um, It's not light. Uh, It's a full on sample it's heavy yeah it's a full sample of the port rush from cambria which we are very excited about it is white with blue veining in it and then kind of like glitter which is one of the cool parts about quartz is that you can do some stuff that you might not find in natural stone and cambria um partners with benjamin moore to tell you what colors work with it like the people who know about these things get paid to pick out colors that will work. And as someone who is not paid to know about these things, I would like to acquiesce to their skill set. So they have the, I think we talked about this on our earlier 
episode, they have this paint match tool on their website that shows their suggested palette of a few different colors. And it's a really cool tool, uh, but we looked at it and the blue that they picked out looked a little bit darker and more blue than we had in mind for our cabinet. Yeah, it was, it's really very kind of a navy blue. And we were thinking more in the range of tealish. Mm -hmm. um, and we picked out a color and finally went to see it not on a screen. Well, we had two colors in mind. We had yeah. found two on the website that were um, obviously hard to tell from the screen what it's going to look like. So that was one of the reasons to go there in person and grab the actual paint chips. Yeah. We wa wandered around the store. Uh, it took quite a while to find that they have um, like 140 different colors of white. So it took a while to identify the ones that we wanted um we the one that was our leading preference was this type of blue called um slate teal and once we got it in the store we realized it it, it was too teal for us it, it didn't quite work it was brighter than we wanted and the uh the one that we ended up liking was our second choice which was not the one, it was a related color, but it was not the one that they, that they recommended. And um, it looks, I think, very good with the, with this here. It, it really draws out the blue. Um, what we liked about this as compared to the teal, the teal is a really beautiful color, but we were worried the countertops we're spending a lot of money on. And so, and they're very unique. They have a very strong veining. And if you have the cabinets competing for attention, it takes away from your very expensive, expensive counter investment. Yeah, the teal that we had, the other teal we had found was brighter and it stood out more than the veining did. And then compared to this one, which sits in the background better. Yeah. And the veins are the ones that pop out yep. with this color combo. And we're doing a combo kitchen. So we're doing um, on the, the bluey teal on the bottom and white on the top. And they had a recommended white color. And honestly, asking me to pick between white <laughs> sounds like my idea of hell. So we just were like, sure, if they if they say that this white works, yeah. this is the white we want to work with. Winter snow, it. It's uh, definitely on the bluer end. It's not yellow, which I did like just yeah. in general. Um, and it looks great next to it. No yeah. no complaints. Yeah, it's got it's got the um, cool undertones to the white. She says, like she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> okay, this is heavy. Take this away. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, but that wasn't the hard part, really. We had done a lot of the work on that already. Mm -hmm. And there is a professional tool for picking colors. It was but, mostly just that we wanted to double check what it looked like in person. Before, which I'm glad we did. And I'm glad we did because this one is definitely better. Yeah. But now, now. Now on to the hard part. The hard part. So my closet, um, we ran into a couple things. One, um, I am getting the pull down style of um, rods. I'm not, I'm vertically challenged <laughs> and, uh, but I own a lot of clothing. Therefore, uh, I need a lot of rod space. I have a lot of dresses, so I have, I need to hang more of my clothes than general. Um, Marie Kondo be damned. I need to hang a lot of my clothes and the pull down hangers and the layout of my closet which is like a L-shaped closet, but it's a walk-through closet. So you walk through it to get to our bathroom, which also means that I, on a personal level, would like doors because I don't need anybody judging my closet situation. And then the other thing is like, we have a cat. I try to keep her out of the closet, but it's hard to keep her out of the closet if there's no door for the closet. Mm -hmm. So um, I need a door, and that turned out to be a little complicated. Yeah, one of the reasons is just the configuration of the room because of the L shape. So that you're going to have cabinets on the short part of the L also. Only lower cabinets with uh, drawers for the laundry basket. But because it's that L, of course, there's like a corner where it's just kind of awkward. So we figured out a way to do a sliding door like a farmhouse barn door style sliding. That way it can slide either in front of the right part of the closet or in front of the left part of the closet. And then you found this really cool one where it folds. 
So it's like a hanging door, but then you can slide just one end of it and then it like goes and folds into a triangle. It's really cool. It's just a barn door and it folds. It's a bifold barn door. I've never seen a bifold barn door before. Um, But it's going to solve a lot of the problems. Yeah. So that one's going to solve a lot of the problems, but it didn't pick colors for us. No. And, you know, it's a lot cheaper, apparently, or at least somewhat cheaper to just do wood that's stained for... Mm -hmm. Compared to paint. Our closet. But our closet's kind of a big visual impact because we have back-to-back closets as an island in this tall yeah. lofted ceiling bedroom and um i'm not in love with the look of tons and tons of wood it's not my like favorite thing but i was trying to be like if you pick the right one it's classic mm-hmm. will it'll be fine you you work with it not against it um but i just think of all the like really orangey 90s wood closets that all really they give a vibe. We started to look for gray stains to see if you can stain wood gray. And it looks like it is a thing, but it's not, there's not a ton of examples. Out and there. well, it also wasn't on the standard list of stains available not. from the cabinet company yeah. that's going out of business. So may or may not be willing to do something experimental for us. Yeah. Um, we found it. We actually found a bunch of them at the Benjamin Moore um, mm-hmm. store. Um, so, your mom is talking to our, uh, the company that's making the cabinets and asking them if they'd be willing to consider a gray stra- stain mm-hmm. because we were kind of into the idea of staining the cabinets like a grayish and then making our room a dusty pink. Mm-hmm. Deep pink, dusty Deep. pink. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of the darker colors because when you wake up, you're just going to be staring at that mass of closets. We were kind of thinking that dark might be a little too intense. It gets really depressing in Portland in the winter. I don't know how much darkness we want in our bedroom, especially with my soon-to-come work schedule mm-hmm. where I'm going to be getting up way early. Um, so, you know, one of the options we considered at the Benjamin Moore store, which were not tied to any of the Benjamin Moore colors. We just went to the store that sells it because we needed to check the colors for the Cambria. So we're kind of not, if if it would be significantly cheaper to get one of the colors we like, but from a different brand, yeah, that's fine. that would be great. We're trying to find out how expensive it would be to paint the wood on these cabinets. Right. How much more is it going to actually cost to do all of that, all those cabinets? Is painted? it hundreds or is it thousands? Yeah, because it might be worth it if it's only hundreds. But if it's like a couple thousand more, that's going to be a bit of a different discussion. Because yeah, we've we're doing a real good job of going a couple thousand more over budget in various categories. Yep. So uh, talk a little bit about the color schemes that we've been through for the bedroom. Yeah, we've gone through a couple different combinations, um, but the... The one that I'm pretty, where did it go? We're going, we're going through a lot of the pink and burgundy options for the bedroom. And um, there's a couple of different ways to go with that, depending on like what side of the red and purple side of pink you want to go. This rosewood, this we're both pretty big fan of this color. There's two ways to go with it, though. It's like it's like dusty millennial pink. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's uh, there's two ways to go with this, which is it could be the cabinet color and then a darker shade of it on the wall, or other way around, where the walls are this color, and then the cabinets are a darker version. I don't know which one's better. I don't know which one's better either. Um, Didn't we I, find the darker version of this also? We did find the darker version of this, but I don't think we got a big... We didn't get a big one, but we yeah. should have a small one in here. Because we looked at um, a darker version of that um, on the internet on a, in a whole room, and we were like, hmm, maybe that's a lot. Um, ah, here it is. Yeah. So the darker version is called um, Old Claret, and this one's called Rosewood. Yeah, and... It's a pretty nice combo, I think, the, together. The the dark... I, but again, I don't know which one should be the big, the bigger statement. Should the walls be darker or should the walls be the lighter one? 
Um, I think the walls should be darker and then the act, the closet should be the pink. So all of this is complicated by the fact, one, we don't know how expensive it is to be to do these. Yeah. Two, we have one other cabinet we are trying to weasel into the order for me, mm. which is my office cabinetry. And we're trying to weasel it into the order because when else are we going to be able to get custom built cabinets at this price mm -hmm. um because we're getting there's quite a few reasons why this is a good deal for us and um we really were struggling to figure out like how how we could fit it in the budget and then how do we minimize the amount of setup fees for different paint colors because every time you get are getting more cabinets painted more colors it costs, there's a setup fee for each color. So we were like, okay, how do we not use all of the same color cabinets for everything and also not, because um, we don't want every cabinet to be pink, but we don't want to be like every cabinet to just be brown to not, because that's no fun. Right, right. So one of the thoughts is that my office, which is on a different floor um, and visually is nowhere near our bedroom, could use pink uh, bookcases as well, and I I think I'm not at all opposed to the idea of some pink book uh, bookcases in my room. Um, my office is meant to be a woodland Regency theme. Uh, however, if we end up not going with pink for the um, closet, then I have a backup teal color right. that I am going to use, uh, which I think was one of the trending colors of the year for Benjamin Moore. Um, but I think is a bit more classically jewel toned teal for my Regency mm. vibes. And it maybe is a little bit more woodland um, oriented. Was that the one, the other big one we got? Yes. So it's this one. This is the teal that I'm thinking about for my office. Um, and if the if we end up going with the pink cabinets in my office, then I will probably use this teal or a similar one, possibly from a more affordable brand or something, on the accent walls. But I'm doing wallpaper um, in, on one wall of my office. So, um, but I really hate being a designer. How about you? <laughs> I know it's like it just keeps. I keep coming back to like I I sometimes have strong opinions, but don't really know how to express them or why they are opinions yep which is not a great uh situation to be in when you're trying to make decisions about colors yep and i feel that no more strongly than when we're talking about the wet bar because the wet yeah. bar is like our i think it's our like design moment in the house <laughs> in a lot of ways because it's relatively small so we we can kind of splurge on some mm -hmm. of the materials and um we're doing something different than we're doing in the rest of places, which I, I hope we don't regret. Yeah. And um, remember what we were saying about setup fees. Pink is not going to work for the no. sexy 1920s or like 1950s Mad Men brass and Nero marble that we've got going on. And um, so pink won't work. The teal is still a little too bright. A little bit too much. So we had to come around to another one. Um, staining is an option. So we might be able to just stain dark wood. Mm -hmm. But um, our ideal would be painted. Ca we just want to paint everything. Pretty much. We really want to paint everything. But our ideal would be dark painted cabinets. Dark painted cabinets. And we found this almost black, which actually complements the teal that will be in the kitchen close by to it pretty well. And uh, they're not like the same color, but they don't conflict for sure. Um, so, so, yeah, you can kind of see. Yeah, it'll kind of be like a, a, my untrained thought is that it'll be like, wait, this is not that, that one. That's Oops. the right, right one. That's the right one. So my untrained belief is that go. it'll look together. Like it'll kind of merge between the two of them with the white cabinets in the middle on the on the overhead yeah. so that's the scheme for the basically the whole kitchen area yep 
Also, I was under the impression all along that um, we were taking the bottom color of the cabinets and bringing it up. But apparently everybody says we should do it the opposite way. So this is on the on the to the left of the fridge. There's this one tall, skinny cabinet that then goes over the fridge. So it is both a base cabinet and an overhead cabinet. Uh, so the question is, does it match the base cabinet color or does it match the overhead cabinet color? And my thought is that it should match the base color cabinet. My thought is it should match the overhead color cabinet. And apparently everyone agrees with Aaron. So if you agree with me, you should comment below and state why I'm right. Um, Let me just give you my argument for it, which was that the upper cabinets are actually adjacent to the main upper cabinet area of the kitchen. So it's the white upper cabinets adjacent to the white upper cabinets over the fridge that then just carry the white down on the left side of the fridge. If it was teal, then it wouldn't have any, there'd be no teal adjoining other teal cabinets there. So that's my argument. Maybe it brings the bottom cabinets around though. It's like a frame. Maybe. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you agree with me, comment below for sure. <laughs> So that's where we're at. We're really struggling. I mean, your mother brought out a box. This was on, unfortunately, like over Zoom. So we were stuck with like, we're getting it across how many different screens and yeah. pixels. Um, but she had a, a huge box of just all the samples of all the different things. And she's trying to like navigate them while holding her iPad up, um, which is very sweet. But I feel like we didn't, love any of the woods yeah these are all the different wood finishes available that the manufacturer has as part of the normal stock yeah i don't think there was that one dark one that um we were like maybe that's the one for the for the bar area but i wouldn't say that we were super in love with any of them i think it was a mahogany stain on was it pine or cedar maybe i don't remember at all but we'll just put it on the screen when we figure it out yep um, I hope we figure it out. I don't know. I feel I feel like we went through a lot of different decisions. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Um, oh, actually, one other change to mm -hmm. the Wepar area. We did a little bit of redesigning of the cabinets. And uh, so we have the sink kind of in the middle. And then we had previously the two upper cabinets coming all the way down to the countertop. And we're going to change it to do only on the right side. Mm -hmm. And that frees up the counter space on the left side. Uh, which will look more normal but then the reason to do it on the right side is because that's a corner which is always awkward when there's like you know a, a dead corner so instead that cabinet's gonna come all the way down and then we're gonna do two drawers in that part between the counter and the upper cabinet seems like a better storage method than our current storage method the pile behind the coffee grinder yeah, but also it's the weirdest corner. It's, it's the like the deepest, corner. weirdest corner because yeah. our, our fridge is at an angle. So they just like built the counter. But I guess it's better than not having counter back there because at least we, we're using it. Yeah, we do get to use it. <laughs> um, and oh, and the kettle too. So we have three things that have to be on the counter and have to be accessible yeah. in that. I'm just, just letting you know. Just letting you know. Um, unless we have hot water on demand on that. Which would be pretty fun. Yeah, I don't know if we have decided if we're going to do that or not. I don't think we need to decide until we get the counter purchased because then they draw. Don't we need a thermostatic valve and rough in? <laughs> no. I thought those were controlled by thermostatic valves. No, they get their own little water heater under the sink. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Even if we have hot water on demand in the house? Mm-hmm. Because hmm. it's not hot enough. The hot water for the house is too cold for yeah, okay. coffee. Okay. Otherwise, you'd be having, having some very hot showers. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't understand how plumbing works. <laughs> You're going to find out pretty soon. Yeah. Once all these pipes start getting put in. So who's late this week? We did actually get the windows delivered. Oh, yeah. But they were supposed to be delivered last week, at mm -hmm. least according to the last thing I heard from the builder. Okay. I don't think it's the end of the world, but they are, I guess, a week late. So the windows are here and that's the next step is putting those in so that we can finish. So we can actually start sealing the house up. Um, so yeah, hopefully they, uh, I guess they're not here today. Otherwise there'd be some loud noises out there. <laughs> I guess so. And then 
What's next? What's word of the week? Oh, word of the week. I mean, all I can really think about is the one paint color called Spellbound because I just feel like it's a cool name for mm. a paint color. So I've been thinking about that paint color a lot. Okay. Which is the color again? Spellbound? Spellbound. It's not even one of the ones we picked. Oh. Okay. Um, there are paint colors. There's a lot of creative naming in those paint colors. I feel it's like. really exhausting to name paint colors, I bet. Yeah. Or maybe someone enjoys it. Maybe it's like writing the quizzes for like you work for Cosmo magazine. You have to write those silly quizzes. Maybe there's someone who's like delights in naming paint colors to silly things. Yep. Um, but are they the same people who design the paint colors? It's a real <laughs> question. And then do the paint color designers ever get in feuds with the people who name them? Interesting. Let us know if you know. <laughs> and uh, what we didn't know we needed to know. I honestly had no idea there were so many types of stains. Oh, yeah. Also, I had no opinions on the type of wood, turns out. I was like, what's cheap? Turns out a lot of them are the same price. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I can identify um, trees in the forest better than I can identify the woods that they come from. So, yeah. Except, like, cedar and, like, the really obvious ones, mm -hmm. like, which is also obvious in the woods. Speaking of cedar, we're going to definitely do cedar lining on the inside of all the closets. I don't know if we're going to do it on all the closets, but we're going to do at least one part yeah. of it. Um, yeah, just we, we've we've had, as far as I can tell, we have one moth that will not die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just having time of its life eating through all of our clothes right now. We have a lot of wool, so. Yeah. All right. That's it. Until next time, uh, don't build a triplex. <laughs> Uh, also, like, subscribe. Like and subscribe and do hit the, the bell. Do the things. Do those things. And we'll see you again next week. And someday you'll find out what paint colors we chose. <laughs>